For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Well, it won't be long now before we're all be saying goodbye to 1948. Broadway will be lit up like the 4th of July, and a million people will be jam-packed around Times Square, armed with noisemakers and horns, waiting for midnight so they can blow their brains out. Which reminds me of my roommate, Irma Peterson. There is a girl who must have overdone it. <laughs> well, now, don't get me wrong, Irma's wonderful. She's sweet and, and a warm-hearted girl, and I love her. It's just that... <laughs> Well, for instance, sometimes she does the oddest things, like this note she left for me. Dear Jane, I have gone to the beauty parlor. Please come at once because I need your advice desperately. If you take a cab, tell a driver to drive carefully. I'm having a shampoo and the streets are wet. <laughs> See what I mean? So little Mother Stacy is wasting no time in getting down to the beauty parlor. There you are, Miss Peterson, all finished. And I must say, you look adorable with that new short bob, I must say. Oh, thank you. Now, about this hair that we cut off, are you sure you want to take it with you? Yes, and please wrap it up as a gift. It's for my uncle. He doesn't have any. <laughs> Now, is there anything else? Yes, uh, a manicure, please. What's the matter, Miss Peterson? You look so depressed. Oh, I'm very unhappy. I have to make a decision, and I don't like to hurt anybody. Excuse me. I want to get another nail file. Oh, hello, Jane. Hello, sweetie. How do you like my well, hair? It's adorable, honey, but your note, what's wrong? Well, before I tell you, you better make an appointment for a finger wave right away. For heaven's sakes, what for? When you hear what I have to say, it might make your hair stand on end. <laughs> I'll keep my hat on. Now tell me, sweetie, what's wrong? Why do you look so, so miserable? Well, as you know, you know, Al and I have been keeping steady company for five years. What about it? Jane, I'm giving him up. You... You're kidding. No, I'm not. I, I love Al, but in all those years, he has never worked and he's never looked for a job. And he's turned down every job that was ever offered to him. That's right. Now, I don't like to make snap judgment, but I've been thinking it over and I've come to a conclusion. About Al? Yes. I think he's lazy. <laughs> Bully for you, Irma Peterson. Well, now what? Well, I'm breaking off with him. Well, Jane, you might at least say I'm doing the right thing. Oh, honey, I don't want to say anything. Every time the two of you break up, I'm in the middle with both of you drowning me with tears. I have to tread water to keep from going down. But, Jane, this time I mean it. Well, all right, Irma, then I'm all for it. Well, now, come on, sweetie, let's get out of here and try to forget your troubles. Okay. Oh, what a gorgeous afternoon. Irma, let's window shop. Oh, I don't think that's exciting. Oh, sure it is, honey. All the stores are having after-Christmas sales. Oh, look at that sign. Men's suits cut in half. That's only good if you have two short fellows. <laughs> uh, Jane, can we go somewhere and talk? I feel funny. My stomach feels empty, and I think it's gone to my head. Well, here's the gypsy tea room. <laughs> Come on, let's drop in and say hello to Professor Kropotkin. Oh, look, Janie and Irma, my two little sweethearts. <laughs> Hello, Professor. My, it's quiet in here. Yes, we ran out of soup early today. <laughs> uh, sit down. 
young girl, sit down, I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, tell me, girls, what will you have, lemon or cream with your tea? Neither. We both take it straight. Yeah, but you got to put something in it. I know, I'll put in a dash of vodka. Why? Our tea is so terrible, you got to put something in it to kill the taste. <laughs> Oh, Professor. No, no, I'll fix it up. I'll be back in a minute. Gee, I feel better already. Well, that's good, sweetie. But, Irma, I want you to realize something. You're breaking off with Al, your boyfriend, and it's no fun being without a guy, especially with New Year's coming. Oh, I won't be alone. I have a new boyfriend. A new one? Yes. Melvin Baxter. I'm seeing him tonight. He's fine and upright and ambitious and honest and weighs 178 pounds, saves his money, is healthy and strong, comes from a fine family and likes dogs. <laughs> you know all that. When did you meet him? Yesterday. Oh, Jane, he's so nice. Well, what does he do for a living? Well, he's, um... Uh, he's a mechanical man. Ball bearing or Dynaflo? <laughs> well, I don't know. He does some kind of work in an airplane factory. Uh... Jane, tell me you wish me happiness. I'm so confused. Honey, not because New Year's is coming, but all year, at any time of the year. I wish you all the happiness anyone could wish anybody. Oh, Jane, you're the best, best friend a girl ever had. You couldn't be a better friend if I was a man and you were a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks loads. Well, here is the tea. Oh, Irma, how nice your hair looks. You going out tonight with Al? No, Professor. Al and I have cut off our relatives. Uh, she means severed relations. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, Irma has a new boyfriend. Oh, is that so? Irma, darling, I'm so glad for you. Not that I got anything against Al, but you're too nice a girl to be stalled. Now, Mrs. O'Reilly is different. She looks like she belongs in a stall. <laughs> but enough with this woman. Irma, oh, my little darling, the old professor is going to play his violin for you to help cheer you up. I'll play something very sentimental. Oh, isn't that sweet, Irma? Oh, yes. Professor, why do you play with your eyes closed? I have to. It isn't easy to play beautiful music and at the same time look at a place like this. <laughs> Gee, they played that song the night Al and I had our first date. You know, I can't help thinking of Al. He may have had his faults, but he was always willing to share them with other people. <laughs> what? He was so big-hearted. I remember the time he took me to the zoo. He bought two bags of peanuts, one for me and one for the elephants. <laughs> he was always kind to dumb animals. <laughs> and then there was a time he took me out for a Chinese dinner. Sneaking lychee nuts off a fruit stand is not my idea of a Chinese dinner. <laughs> Jane, we went to a restaurant and everything was served in real Chinese style. You know, we both ate from the same bowl. <laughs> so cute. That's romantic. But I didn't get to eat much. Why not? Well, Al explained to me that among the native Chinese, the women eat with just one chopstick. <laughs> oh, what memories. I hate him. Well, how did you like that, girl? Oh, it was wonderful, Professor, and I'm sure it took Irma's mind off of Al. Well, come on, Irma. We better start home so you can get ready for your date tonight. Well, we're back at the apartment, and Irma is really excited about her date with her new boyfriend, Melvin Baxter. I have never seen anyone so anxious to make an impression. She has a plan. She has the book of knowledge in one hand, the dictionary in the other hand, an ice pack on her head, and she's sitting on the hot water bottle. <laughs> oh, now I get it. This must be Irma's way of showing Melvin that she is understanding, has a warm heart, and keeps a cool head. <laughs> Gesundheit. Oh, now she's on another kick. 
This one I can't figure out. She's sprawled on the sofa with one arm flung to the side, her head loosely hanging over the edge. One foot is propped up on the table. Oh, this beats everything. Irma, I give up. What is this gruesome charade supposed to be? I'm practicing so when Melvin comes in, I can show him that I'm unattached. <laughs> Irma, pick up the pieces. There must be another way. Oh, Jane, I don't know what to do. Al doesn't even know I'm going to break off with him. I'm so confused. A girl can't have two boyfriends because it doesn't look right for a single girl to go out on a double date. <laughs> Irma, when you see Al, just be honest. Who is it? It's me, chicken. You're loving Al. Uh, just a minute. Oh, Jane, I, I don't know how to tell him. Tell him the truth. You're tired of wasting your time on a man who refuses to work, and from now on, you're playing the field. All right, I'll let him in. Hiya, chicken. Al, I refuse to work, and from now on, I'm playing in the field with a man. <laughs> That's what you told me. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Uh, goodbye, kids. Jane! You're on your own, honey. Good luck. Chicken, what's this all about? Al, you and I are through. Through? Chicken, what do you mean? Well, I'll, I'll try to explain. Remember that Tarzan of the Apes picture we saw where the lady ape left her ape husband and was carried off by a gorilla and lived happily ever afterwards? Well, what about it? Al, I don't want you to be hurt, but I have found another gorilla. Chick, you can't do this to me. My love is too strong. Oh, Al, what do you know about love? Chicken, do you know how deeply I feel toward you? How? Like a salmon. Is that good? Chicken, do you know why the salmon fights to get upstream? Over treacherous falls, rocks, and, and raging whirlpools? Of course, Al. He's anxious to get to the cannery. <laughs> no, Chick. It's love. Blind, relentless love. The same feeling I have for you. It's too late, Al. We've wasted a lot of time, and we're no closer than when we first met. I have to think of my future, so I found a new boyfriend. Well, Chicken, that's the way you feel like I guess there's nothing I can do to change it. But if you pick up the morning papers and see my name heading the obituary column, you may be sorry. No, I won't, Al. I wish you all the fame and fortune you can get. <laughs> Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth. And you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste. Because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. The toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, I came back to the apartment. Al had already left, and Irma's eyes were a little red. But she seems to be bearing up quite well. In fact, she's so excited about preparing for Melvin's arrival, she hasn't time to think about Al. The dinner table is set for three. And the roast looks scrumptious. 
Jane. Yes, sweetie. Uh, will you please move that footstool over in front of the door while I put this pillow in front of the sofa? Well, for heaven's sake, Irma, what for? Well, when Melvin comes in and trips over the footstool, he'll land on the pillow in front of the sofa where I'll be sitting, and before he can get up from his knees, I'll say, I do. <laughs> be sensible. Besides, he's liable to break his leg and sue us for everything we've got. Don't try any tricks, honey. Just be, be sweet and alluring. Alluring? Uh, I know. I'll just spray this stuff over the sofa. Irma Peterson, are you out of your mind? That's my new bottle of 20-carat perfume. I know, but carrots are good for the eyes, and when we're sitting here in the dark, Melvin and I will still be able to see each other. <laughs> Look, sweetie, after all, you're an attractive girl. It isn't necessary for you to throw yourself at the man. Well, you know best, Jane. Uh, what should I do? Well, for one thing, you're, you're too forward. You should be, well, uh, retiring. But, Jane, I can't quit my job until after we're married. <laughs> Let me put it another way. Honey, you just can't go around wearing your heart on your sleeve. Oh, I see what you mean, Jane. And I'll try, but gosh, what if I forget? Well, in that case, we'll have a little signal. Uh, I'll just say uh, the, your sleeve, and that will mean you're wearing your heart on it, okay? Yes, I'll remember. Fine. Well, let's see now. Candles are lit on the table. Fresh flowers in the vase. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Jane? Al's picture. You'd better get that out of here before Melvin arrives. Oh. That's right, I know. I'll put Al's picture in the refrigerator. The refrigerator? <laughs> yes, my girlfriend Amber says a girl should never discard any of her boyfriends completely. She said you should always have one on the ice. <laughs> oh, that must be Melvin. Well, now, remember, sweetie, don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Oh, I won't. Uh, come in. Hello, Miss Amber. Oh, hello, Melvin. Uh, I'd like to have you meet my roommate, Jane Stacy. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And Miss Emma's told me so much about you that you seem like an old friend. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way, Melvin, because Jane's going to be my bridesmaid when we get married. Irma. Uh, no, Jane, I didn't mean us. I meant Melvin and I. Uh... <laughs> uh, Irma tells me you're in the aviation line. It, it, it must be fascinating work. Yes, I find it so. There are many things necessary to ensure the proper takeoff of the plane. For instance, they must head into the wind. That's where I stand. Gee, that's dangerous. <laughs> Do you ever get hit? <laughs> Dear me, no. I'm in charge of the wind tunnel. Every plane must be tested before we send it into the air. It's quite a responsibility. Yes, I imagine. Let me show you this watch. It was presented to me by the president of our company. Go ahead. Uh, read the inscription on the back of it. Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. In appreciation for 10 years of faithful, unswerving, steady wind. <laughs> Melvin, you must be tired. <laughs> no, I have two tremendous fans. Oh, Jane, isn't he wonderful? He dances, too. <laughs> Irma, dear, don't you think it's time we serve dinner? Oh, yes, I, I, I hope you like my cooking, Melvin, because that's the way to a man's stomach. Uh, Irma, uh, your sleeve. Oh, no, not through the sleeve. That's the long way. <laughs> Am I, uh, missing something? No, 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 no. J just sit down and, and eat. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't stay for dinner. I meant to tell you sooner, but when I get started talking about my work, I forget everything else. I hope you'll forgive me. Oh, Melvin. Well, they're depending on me to be there. I have to test the straining point of a new cross rib construction on the wingtips. Well, we're having spare ribs and asparagus tips. Would that help? <laughs> no, but the test will only take about an hour. If it's all right with you, I'd love to come back. Goodbye. Jane. Yes, sweetie? What do you think of him? The, um, Wind King? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, 
Sit down, Miss O'Reilly. Oh, thank you, Irma, darling. I just had to take a peek at your new boyfriend. It's me woman's curiosity. Excuse me, Mrs. O'Reilly, you are blocking the driveway. <laughs> oh, it's you, Professor. Where did you come from? Well, while you were watching from behind the staircase, I was peeking from the broom closet. <laughs> Closet? Yes, and if the rent isn't any higher, I'd like to exchange it for the room I live in. <laughs> the broom closet's so much roomier. Oh, Professor, you're always complaining. Oh, oh Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor, you haven't told me how you like my new boyfriend. Oh, hey, my darling, he looks like a very nice fellow, but it's hard to tell a book by its cover. Take the cashier we used to have at the Gypsy Tea Room. Outwardly, he had all the appearances of a perfect gentleman. He was polite, kind, courteous, but we were all very much disappointed in him. Why? When he robbed the safe, he didn't even leave us a thank you note. <laughs> Don't mind the professor, Ermer. I saw your boyfriend and he looks like a fine lad. Reminds me of a boy I went to school with, Bill. He was very fond of me. We were always seen together. Oh, we were inseparable. He became quite a fella, that Buffalo Bill. <laughs> now see here, you old fiddle No, 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 hold it, Mrs. O'Reilly, hold it. Don't get mad at me. Remember, I'm taking you to a movie tonight. You've got the passes. <laughs> Come on, my little mountain. How dare no, you? you didn't let me finish. Come on, my little mountain goat. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, girls. Jane, oh, I wish Melvin had stayed for dinner. Oh, that Melvin. Irma, you really picked a winner. Well, come on, let's eat before everything spoils. Guess you're right. As they say, to the victor belongs the spoils. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sweetie, that was a wonderful dinner you cooked. Wasn't it nice just the two of us being here alone? Now, you didn't miss Al, did you? No. Irma, you're sniffling. That's because I'm expecting to peel onions later in the evening. <laughs> well, I'll get it, Jane. Yes? A telegram for Miss Peterson, 240, collect. Oh, well, here you are. Uh, keep the change. Thanks. Who is it, Irma? It's a telegram, Jane. A telegram? It's for me, Collect. Oh, Collect. Well, what does Al have to say? <laughs> well, I'll read it. Let's see. Uh, Dear Irma, as I stand here in the unemployment line with no one to urge me on, I get the feeling all my success is in vain. So since you have cast me aside, it leaves me with one... Alteration. Alternative. Alternative. <laughs> and therefore, I'm going to jump off the Hoboken Pier. The night watchman is a very dear friend of mine, and he will give me permission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will wait until 11.30 before taking the fatal le leap. Signed, Harry. That's hurry. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jane, what shall I do? Forget it, honey. The only time Al ever jumped was when someone offered him a job. Hold it, sweetie. Hello? Hello, Jane. This is Al. Would like to talk with Chicken. It's for you, honey. Johnny Weismuller. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Chicken. How long do you think a guy can wait on this pier? You want me to catch pneumonia? <laughs> oh, it's you, Al. Well, what I said still goes. Aw, oh, chicken, have a heart. You can't do this to me. Why can't I? Because my heart is broken. I can't live without you. And besides, they charge me 25 cents to get on the pier. <laughs> no, Al, we're through. In that case, chicken, will you grant me one last request? Well, what is it, Al? Can I reverse the charges? <laughs> Sorry, wrong number. Goodbye. <laughs> That's the way I like to hear you talk, honey. You can afford to be independent now. Melvin will be back soon, and, and you'll have a lovely time with him. Uh, come in. Hello, Miss Stacy. Hello, Miss Irma. Oh, hello, Melvin. Uh, did you finish the test? Oh, yes. Everything was quite satisfactory. Well, we could still make a late movie if you'd like. Good idea. Uh, I 
know one I think you'd like. Hmm? I saw it in the movie so section. It's just been released again. Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Gone with the wind. Great Scott. Melma, what's wrong? I forgot to shut the wind off in Tunnel 3. Oh, you must excuse me, but we'll date some other day. My job comes first. Oh, 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 Jane. I had one boyfriend who never worked, and I've got one who works all the time. <laughs> well, it's a tough break, honey, but I'm sure it'll work out. Uh, Irma, who are you writing to? The Lonely Hearts Club. How does this sound? Attractive girl, blonde, 23 years old, wishes to meet personable young man who works part-time. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you'll feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never stops forming. No, it never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with irium today. quite a problem. She's given one man the air and all she gets from the other man is wind. <laughs> However, she seems to be taking it all in stride. Right now, she's arranging the photographs of each of the men in her life. Melvin's picture is on the mantelpiece. And Al's picture, she's put on top of an old broken radio we have in the closet. Irma? Uh, yes, Jane? What's the idea of putting Al's picture on that radio? Well, because he seemed to match, neither one of them works. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it frightens me every time I think there might be a little sense in the mind of my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad is Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Led Gluskin. This is Wendell Nile speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often, because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>